Welcome on my first step ever. It's exciting that we are about to reach our 100th episode and to get to those episode we have such interesting stories and personalities on the for my first step ever and you will get to hear so many different perspectives just in one story in today's episode because our guest speaker has amassed very valuable experiences in his life so far so without a further ado let me welcome kevin lee all the way from sydney hi kevin welcome on my first step ever Hi Shani, thank you so much for the warm welcome. I'm excited to be here. I am super excited to host you and dig into all the questions that I have so I can find out how Kevin thinks, what is Kevin's mindset really and what are his motivation and how he builds his life, designs his life because I tried to summarize your intro but I see that you have so many things that it's so <laughs> difficult. So let's just start with something that you're presently doing and that is Kevin is the co-founder of the Butterfly Effect DAO now we will understand what that stands for and he works with artists to raise funds for an environmental charity organization or agency that is amazing now he does this in a very unique way and i tried to understand what it is so i think i'll leave it to him to explain it to us but my friend it's just thought that he does he's the board member of Strange Love Investments he's the co-founder of May May Flower he's the founder of Beyond Meditation and so much that I can't even begin to explain or maybe share with you right now and hence I'm very interested to know how it all began for Kevin or what was his mindset that he really delved into such a level of perfection or you know curiosity that he has done so many amazing things in his life so far so Kevin let's just start and let me just dive straight into the question that i want to ask since you have had so many different experiences so far please take us to the biggest failure that you had so far and if you can just share that what you learned from it sure shani thank you for the wide introduction <laughs> i know it can be pretty complicated with my bio but i guess that's what, what makes me me uh, i like to do a I lot think of that's different amazing things. that's unique <laughs> All right, uh, let's start from my biggest failure. Coming from uh, an immigrant family in, in in Australia, my mother had fled Vietnam due to the war, came to Australia by boat with my brother and sister. Uh, she had met my father here and um, they had me. And growing up in an immigrant family, maybe you can relate, they uh, based a lot on education. They want you to do well in school, go out, um, go to university, get a good job, um, security. And I understand where they're coming from. You know, they, they traveled far and wide and sacrificed a lot for us. And they, they just want the best for us. And growing up with that mentality, I tried to do the best to follow uh, their ideal. I tried to do my best at school and went to university. And I tried to get a job in that field. You know, I had, had my life planned for me, in a sense. You know, you kind of had this trajectory path and go, look, yeah, just going to finish school, go to uni get a get a corporate job earn six figures had a long uh, had, at the time I had a uh, a long term relationship I was going to get married at this age and then going to buy a house and have kids and it was just all laid out right <laughs> Yeah. Very <laughs> and, interesting. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm happy that at least you had goals. <laughs> that's that's important. <laughs> yes. Um, but I think it's quite common in immigrant families to have that kind of trajectory. And I had set that out for myself and I had planned to go for it. But even though I got to pretty much every step of the way, I felt that I felt unhappy. I felt, you know, something is amiss here. I had a house at that point. I had a mortgage to pay, had a job, had a long-term partner, all of these things that yeah, my my family wanted for me. And yeah. yet I felt so empty and I felt so lost in a sense. It's one of those things where when you're young, you don't really know what you want. You kind of put it out there and you think, oh, maybe that's what I want. You know, even, you know, what do you study at uni? You don't even really know. You just kind of pick something that you think you might want. And then when you get there, you know, you realize, oh man, this, this is, wasn't what I imagined at all. This is what I wasn't, I visualized. And so that to me was a true failure because you set out and you try to get everything that you want. You get there and you realize it's not what you want. 
And so that was uh, one of my biggest turning points for me. This is so true. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I can't even say that, you know, uh, it's, it's, it is definitely sad that, you know, after being able to achieve what you had set out to in the first place, whether it was your own call or whether it was something that other people expected, but it still takes a lot of effort to do that, to achieve something and then feeling empty in your heart or in your mind somewhere that you know that everything seems meaningless but it's great that you touched upon this situation in your life and very genuinely because most of the people the youth right now they do face the similar situation and and it's often you have said very rightly it's often what people in the uh, in your surroundings or your own you know family circle or your friends they are the ones because you're spending most of your time with and you listen to what they think is the way of living that becomes your way of living and we never ever sit down to think that is this what i really want but that that's really uh, i would say natural as well because i think when you're that age if you, you if you have not had enough experiences of your own you don't really have a set foundation or base you know reflect on if this is right for me or wrong so from there like when you faced your biggest failure from there i see that you must have had a really good reflection point and how did things you know take turn from there for you things took a drastic turn from there i pretty much quit everything. I flew one of my best friends at the time to Japan and I took some savings with me and we started our first business and it was gray market importing. So essentially all it is, is that you're buying something from overseas, you bring it back to Australia and you flip it for a profit margin. That was a simple model. We just knew the market. We knew the niche. Um, it was a, it was the scene that we, we were involved with. We had a lot of fun because you know we flew to a country in japan and we had no we didn't understand the language we couldn't speak the language and it was just foreign navigation from what from that project led on to another and essentially i had caught the entrepreneurial bug it just kept coming uh, you know all these shiny objects just get thrown in front of you you see opportunities you speak to people you expand your networks and that's what kicked it off and i haven't stopped since yeah, I think it would it won't be wrong to say that we are my, my audience and I am chatting to the serial entrepreneur today because I think you have done so many different ventures in your life so far. Kevin, I like to sort of backtrace in your story because since the point you quit to the point you met your I, I mean you yeah you reunited with your best friend or maybe you just went up to your best friend and you guys flew to Japan and things started off from there. The time between that part is the most trickiest and it's the most difficult part that no one else sees. And it's very difficult to share that as well. But if you are happy to share that, I would really like to ask that what were, what was your mindset, you know, during that time? How did you realize that, you know, this is not what you want? How did you give yourself the confidence that it's okay, you know, even I have just spent the entire life doing something I don't want. How do I take the take charge of my life from here? And how did you get the confidence to say yes to what you want to do and go ahead from here? So I think because this is the phase where most of us just lie and procrastinate and just don't take a step from here. So if you can share that with us. I think at that point in time, and I still do it now as well, it's future fear projection. And I was already not happy in the situation I was. And I thought to myself, you know, at the place that I was working, I saw the senior people right across from me. And I thought, that's going to be my future if I stay here for the next decade. I'm going to look like that person and be that person. And it scared me, you know, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be that. Uh, like you, when you're unhappy in this moment, what makes you think that doing the same thing over and over again for the next decade is going to make you more happy? It just didn't yeah. make any sense. And that future projection of myself in the next five to 10 years, I just thought, no, nope, <laughs> that's not me and I can't do it. 
And that exercise really helped me. And I still use it till today um, with various projects. That future projection gave me, it scared me so much that I got up, had to get up and go, okay, I can't do this. Let's, let's go. And that was the first step. And then the second step is coming up with the courage to, to give something else a go. And with that, I, you always try to measure your risk at the end of the day. Yes. You know, like you, you've got to, people take risks, but you've got to take measured risks. And I thought, all right, I'm taking some savings. I'm flying me and my best friend overseas. It's a portion of my savings. It's not, I'm not going to become completely broke. Yeah. And if I lose that money, it's, you know, consider it my MBA, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning business school. Um, and even if I came back with zero and it all went to zero, I could always get another job. And so measuring the risk, it was asymmetrical. I, I didn't have much to lose. I could always rebuild that capital if I wanted to. Uh, but what was the upside? Unlimited upside. What if it went well? And then I did the future projection in an optimistic way. What if it did well? And all the opportunities that could come my way, all the people I would meet, all the adventures that I would have, all of these things got me really excited. And that helped me make my first move. That's amazing. So I think the three takeaways that I like to kind of summarize for our listeners over here is that if you are in a situation where you're not happy and you know that this is not going to serve you any purpose anymore in your life, you need to sit down, reflect, but take quick actions. But the first thing is that you need to have a future projection just as Kevin explained. And I think that's a beautiful example that he gave. The second thing he said that how to take courage is to have take measured risk. When you take measured risk you know that what you are aiming for and what you might lose or what you might not lose and the third thing was that be optimistic that what if it goes well so that is amazing kevin thank you so much for telling us that how one can you know really come out of a situation which we often fall into even if we have faced success in our life so we do kind of you know dive down into the situation sometime time and again but from here now that you have you took that jump and you you got that on the entrepreneur bug that just you had that in you you started kind of going on and kind of creating different ventures take us through that journey of yours also along with that if you can tell us that what it takes to have the kind of mindset that you have to balance out these different ventures at the same time you know, as I mentioned, after I caught the entrepreneurial bug, I just kept wanting to do things and create things um, because it was so much fun when you're building something from scratch. You know, you, you're like, it's new energy. It, creation is energy. And when you have the resources and you have the collaborations and you have the team and the support and the network, you just want to go, go, go. And you know, I've had my fair share of challenges. It's not like everything I've done has been a success. I've made many uh, failures, have, have had many failures and I've had some expensive lessons, but that is all part of the process, right? That is that word there. The process is what matters to me. I, a lot of the time I don't do it because I think it's going to make me a lot of money. Um, I do it because I think the journey is going to be really fun and what I hope to get out of that journey is skills and relationships in the long term, because that's invaluable to me. Money will always come and go depending on different jobs and different businesses, different ideas, the relationships you build and the skill sets that you acquire will stay with you. And if you focus on the process, you're more likely going to be happier in the moment than focusing on the end result, because the end result honestly is very overrated and you can never get enough. Like you might aim for X amount of dollars, revenue turnover. You hit that. What do you do next? You set a higher goal. Once you hit that, what do you do? Hit a, never satisfied. Set another goal. You never, <laughs> you never get satisfied. You open one thing. What do you want? You open the second thing. It, it just keeps going. Right. So using that as your North star is probably not the best idea because you, it's a moving uh, goalpost. Yeah. It's, basically focusing on the process for me. I'm not sure if I answered your question, Ashani. <laughs> now, I think you have, and I like to sort of 
I emphasize on a few things that makes me understand that how you are able to design the life that you are, because not everyone is an entrepreneur, not everyone is made up of with that molecule and the entrepreneurs of course are not able to uh, they don't like the kind of uh, other job that people do but i see that both the kind of ways like either you work for yourself or you work for uh, the company but the cause that you're working for is something that really really motivates you the whole point of working in a space is that if you are happy with what you're doing if you're looking at the right matrix in your life and that's why you know when i ask kevin for everyone who's listening to us today when i ask kevin that how do you manage multiple ventures then a lot of people are unable to even you know manage one so i understood that because he likes the very basic of the basics the foundation of the how venture is done you know it's not the end point he's enjoying the process and when you derive happiness from the process you obviously want to have more experiences similar or maybe even better experiences and that's why this is what my understanding is kevin you can definitely let me know if there's something else that you know speaks out to you more but yeah sure i can add to that i mean to answer the question more accurately i believe as about how i am able to manage the multiple projects and it is with a team you know a company is two or more you, you know you if you're an owner operator that's only one person but if you're a team and you're a company there is more of you and i think a team is what's required to achieve greatness like you can't do everything by yourself and leverage is very important and the leverage of labor the leverage of capital in this sense is how we are able to get more done because for example one business will have a team running it and of course I'll be there and of course I'll lead with the team but I need to build new leaders in that team the process continues and you need that and it as as you start to develop in the game of entrepreneur and the game of business the leadership skills and the management skills are very important and you don't really get taught that you kind of gain that from experience this is amazing so i this this has really made me you know think of a few things in my life and i was like when i'm listening to i'm evaluating the way i work in my job and with podcasts as well and when a lot of people ask you that how do you keep continuing doing something it's because exactly i would like to go back to what you mentioned earlier is the kind of matrix that you set for yourself if money is the only thing that you're looking at you will be never satisfied but as you said building relationships building a team seeing other people become the leaders so that they can drive you know your vision forward that also aligns with their vision these are the few things that help you go forward in your life because you're not just improving yourself you're impacting and influencing other people's life positively so this is amazing thanks kevin for sharing that you know how things work for you and moving on i like to ask you top 3 things that you like to tell a youth today who's listening to us who's also trying to kind of you know figure out what is the, is is that what they really want to do if today you can tell them three top things to be able to commit themselves to whatever they want to do what would be the three top things that you like to tell them i'm going to talk off the cuff here and let's see how we go <laughs> uh, one thing i could say is how you do anything is how you do everything take things seriously when you go for it try to do the best that you can because when you are able to achieve depth and focus and greatness in one area it shows that you can do it in other areas as you develop the confidence in that area you can take it across different industries because if you never go deep and you're always just very shallow and you only you float from one thing to the next it's when at times when it comes a tough time and it's time to focus and go real deep you, you don't have the capacity so train yourself from an early stage that's definitely the first thing second thing is whenever you're choosing a goal to achieve whether it's in business or whether it's in you know whether you're looking for a company to work with you know a classic simon sinek thing is start with why and understand that you know why why do you want to do this why do you want to go that that distance and 
for me, I always try to think long term. Whenever I'm given something, an opportunity, or looking for an opportunity, I think if I'm not going to do this over the next five to ten years, then I'm not going to do it because when you go down a certain path, it's going to be very difficult. Like when you do, especially when you do your own thing, it's going to be very challenging. It's not always good times. And if you don't have a strong enough why, and you're not ready to, you know, wait it out for the next five to 10 years, you're not going to get very far. Success doesn't happen overnight. So that would be my second thing. <laughs> and the third thing is something that I've spoken about before is, is trust in the process. Don't, don't look at the end goal, you know, focus on the process. The journey is what's fun. It's the hardships right now that is fun. That's what you create memories about, not at the end point, you know, focus on the process and not the results. That's um, my, my final words there. Incredible. You know, I'm having so much fun in this conversation. I was about to ask the last question, but I'm going to throw one more question at you from what you just <laughs> mentioned that how does one decide that you will be wanting to do something for the for next five years at least? So for example, you know, let's just take this podcast as an example, as a case study. Yep. So you started a podcast and you know, you've, you might've created a couple of episodes to begin with. And then you think, okay, well, if I'm going to do this for the next five to 10 years, which means I'm going to be producing at least X amount of episodes per week, per month, year in year out, which is going to equate to hundreds of episodes. Yep. And I have to do all these things to get them up and speak every week on hours on end and record. Am I going to be happy doing that? Absolutely. And if you're, if the answer is no, that vision is dreadful, then don't, don't start it. Like don't do it. You know, but if you're like, yes, I would do that happily. Then you've got your answer. Awesome. I think that was such a personal example. <laughs> uh, very easy for me to understand. And I think a very nice way to give someone an example to put them in the position to make them think right there. So thank you so much, Kevin. It has been amazing chatting with you, uh, getting to know your mindset, starting off with the biggest failure that you mentioned, which I believe is the biggest failure for any one of us in our life. But that is the one failure that we must have early on so that we can decide our path going forward. And taking us through the different mind, the kind of mindset that you have and very amazing tips that you have just given us to be, stay committed. Now, as I mentioned at the very beginning, we will understand from you that what do you really do and what does the butterfly effect DAO stands for? If you can take us through that and where people can find you. Yes. Uh, the butterfly effect DAO, DAO is, DAO stands for decentralized autonomous organization. We essentially collaborate with artists, create digital art. We raise funds through events or through campaigns. And through those funds, we reinvest into green smart companies that will move the needle forward in the fight for climate change. And that is the focus there. Uh, people can find me at, on www.kevinleesocial.com. They, my, all my handles for my social media from Instagram to LinkedIn, it's the same thing, Kevin Lee Social reach out to me anytime. Happy to connect. Thank you so much, Kevin, for leaving those links over there. I will leave the links of the show notes as well. And to all my listeners, I like to say that whenever you think of, you know, when people say that you must spend time with the kind of people who can raise your energy, raise your vibration and who are already up there where you want to reach and you feel like, oh, but I don't have anyone in my circle. How do I do that? This is the place where you can. If you have felt that you can learn something from Kevin, well, I definitely felt that. And if you feel like being around him would really help you learn a bit more things to how to lead your life. If you'd like to be, you'd like to start your own venture, or even if you're in your own job, but how to develop that mindset. This is a great way to be connected with him and stay on on this journey with him and still keep learning even from far away because I think digital platform has done so much good for us. So just, it is amazing if you want to use it for your good. So thank you so much, Kevin, for being on my first step ever. And I always request my guest speakers to leave our listeners with a quote or a saying that they really resonate with. If you cannot be the number one in your current category, 
create a new one and become number one in that. And that is by from the 22 immutable laws of marketing. This is super, but this is super. <laughs> I think it is, it's po point on for any creator, innovator, any creative minds, and for anyone who like, likes to become the number one. It's also a competition from yourself within. It's a comparison of your growth that where you can get and how you can help people in the industry in which you are. It's always about providing the solution, helping other people out. So thank you so much, Kevin, for being on my first step ever. And to all my listeners out there, we will be back shortly with another episode. Stay tuned.